For some reason we have two of these in the level. I'm not sure how I managed that, but it doesn't hurt. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so there, there's our very basic example, and this already is kind of something new. Mm -hmm. But um, the next thing I want to do is demonstrate how we add a little bit of functionality to that. So what I'll do is, by default, I'm just going to make it so that the, the the light and the particle effect are not turned on. Okay. And then we have to press a button on the joypad to actually switch them on. Gotcha. So we have this visible tick flag mm -hmm. on the particle emitter. Likewise, on the light, we have a on property. So now when you go into the level, we should see that they're no longer on. The fire is out. Yeah. So going back to the rule of we need components for functionality, what we need to do now is we add an input component. And a good case of this is if a player or a user would walk up to the fire and it said, you know, start fire. Yes. And then you would yeah. be able to use this input to actually create the fire and have them interact. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I should explain, but one thing we have tried to do with, because the, it's, it's these components that give you the functionality. Um, and what that allows us to do is kind of control what you see in the editor. So until you've actually added an input component to your entity, mm -hmm. you won't see any functionality relating to input, which just, you know, when you're, when you're a new user to this system means you're not bombarded with information. Oh, it's good. I'd like, I'd like to fix it. Does it make it more lean when it's actually compiled? Uh, um, on that? A little bit, just a little bit. It doesn't make a huge difference. We, we tend, if we're not using something, we tend not to create it at runtime, but uh, okay. it, it helps, every little helps. So we have this input component, and now what we want to do is we go back to the signal graph, which I showed you briefly before. Um, um, like this, yeah, this is kind of the central hub where most of the logic will take place. You can, of course, have multiple signal graphs if you want, but just for demo purposes, I'll keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And what we want to listen to is for, I think it's action pressed. And this will basically fire when we press a button on the joypad. Okay. Um, we don't want it on any old button. We want to actually be selective. So what we can do is we can have a switch node. And this will take an input that's, it's, it's like we call it in C++ an enumeration, where it has a, a, it's like a list of possible types. So we have a list of possible input types. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, we can choose those and do, we can branch the execution based on the value of that. So okay. in this case, we actually call it cases. Um, but in this case, we want to listen to pad button A. So that means we'll actually get an output on this node. And before we, get, before we go forward, just so I can understand and maybe the viewers can understand, how does this relate? And by this, I say the action press node and switch to the other nodes that already exist. Are they required or is this just a framework that whenever you bring up a graph, you have the start, stop, and update. How does that relate to the action press node that you just put in there? Um, not at all, basically. They're, they're, they're completely isolated logic. OK. Um, so it's not required to interface with them or interact with them in the no. graph? No. I mean, at some point, like, again, another thing to point out is this is kind of experimental, and a lot of things are going to change. Mm -hmm. um, we put the start, stop, and update in there just as a kind of Let's help the user get started. Mm -hmm. um, but in the long term, we will probably have something, maybe an empty graph, but with a list of recommended nodes or something like that. And that Similar be, to flow graph, where you get this, you can add a start node or you can yes, update exactly. every So frame. I mean, you can, we can quite easily delete these nodes and re-add them if we want. I guess I'll just delete them now, in fact, just to make things a little bit more readable. But yeah, we can soon add if we want to have the start again. We have start, stop, and update here. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. That makes it clear. Yeah. So, getting back to what we were doing before, um, we wanted to turn the light and the particle emitter on. So, um, both of these should have functions that are, there's a component can expose functions which become nodes in a graph. So, mm -hmm. now that we have this, um, light and particle limit component, we can actually call some functions on those. So we can do um, light and then we can switch the light. So we want to switch the light. How convenient, on. a light switch. Yes, yeah. I know. 
and then same for the particle emitter I think we can say that that's going to be set to visible so with this also we have outside of the input the light switch and then the emitter are we actually able to take the output pad button A from the input key and put it into multiple ports or do we have to actually chain it like you show there um, can, you, can you move this outward to where it, uh, no so no. you actually have to have a full chain yeah this is something that's a little different to flow graph where mm -hmm. we try to be very deterministic with the way that the nodes are called so you have to explicitly like most nodes will have an in and an out and you have to explicitly link those okay um, which takes a little bit of effort takes a bit more work but it means that you can look at a graph and know the order that yeah. the nodes are going to execute in the flow is quite clear yeah I guess exactly you. yeah okay and there's there's never any it it's deterministic there's never any kind of room for error if if it looks right it's going to work correctly makes sense so having said that i'll probably go wrong now but uh <laughs> for jumping game now and i press the a button Ooh, look at that. start awesome it's pretty simple yeah it's a lot easier than c plus plus and lua it's very simple but I'm not happy with it. 